we've been warned. Uh, welcome. Glad to be together and to share some relatively new Jewish music uh, um, with all of you. Um, this is a, a part two. Um, so I can't remember if everybody was here for the first one, but if you weren't, it's okay. Um, I'm not going to be repeating, um, but we have some really good stuff here and it could, could stand alone um, just with this. Um, and I have, uh, I've gathered um, a variety of things um, and we'll see what we, what we have time for. I might run out of time again, as I did last time, hence the part two um, and my overexcitement of uh, being able to share some new stuff. Um, but as I was thinking about our, our time together, one of the themes that, that came uh, up in my mind is, of course, prayers for peace uh, and or um, things that, that people have done in reaction to um, October 7th and its aftermath. Um, so I'll be sharing a couple of those things. Um, and then also- um, I I Here, I can put it out here. Mom, can you mute? <laughs> um so the the other thing I, I had an opportunity to, to do was to ask um somebody who is um recently ordained as a cantor um what what's out there and in particular are there any queer Jewish musicians that we should be looking at or that are exciting um so I have a few of um to a few people to highlight as well uh, in that realm um, and then some just scatterings of, of things that I think are cool and interesting and nice. Um, so we'll see what we get through. Um, I, I have a playlist that um, with with the first iteration of this class's um, uh, list as well that I can put out there. I know I have not done that yet, um, but now that I have everything all together, um, I will be happy to share that um, with those who are here and um, I imagine with our Beit Mish service leaders and uh, maybe more widely. Um, so it's a YouTube playlist um, that, that I can share. Um, so the, the first thing that I want to share is, um, is a response to, um, to October 7th. And this is from uh, Temple Shalom's new cantor, uh, Zevi Tovlev. And uh, and Zevi, in preparation for for something that um, that the congregation was going to be doing, uh, was looking for inspiration in the midst of pain and uh, shock, and uh, opened up Marsha Falk's uh, book of blessings and found um, found some words that spoke to them, and I'll put the the meaning of the Hebrew in the chat. Um, because um, they they don't I, I don't I don't think they translate uh, the Hebrew in the song itself, um, and because it's not like a well known piece song like Ose Shalom or something along those lines. <laughs> so um, this is the the translation. Uh, we plead, source of peace, let it drip like dew, let this peace drench us like rain, and let the land overflow with peace. Um, so let me get this up on my screen and I will share it with you. And there are, I apologize, there will be a lot of uh, sharing and unsharing and making something on full screen and then, uh, so stick with me on that. Um, and I'm actually gonna stop so that I can optimize our audio for um, a video clip. Which I always forget to do. Okay. All right. Oh, God. 
Cantor Zevi Simcha Tovlev, um, who then, um, after composing this, shared it with, with the congregation at, at uh, I think, immediately after uh, at, the, at a vigil or a Shabbat service that they did together. Um, and um, that's the the one that I know of. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are others that I haven't heard of that are direct um, outpourings and, and responses um, in the aftermath of, of the attacks on October 7th. Um, but um, I wanted to share a couple of other prayers for peace that um, I think speak to the moment. And um, one of them um, is actually a response to, uh, to a different um, attack on the Jewish community, which was the Tree of Life synagogue shooting. We just marked the, the five-year anniversary of that um, this past Shabbat. And um, in the wake of that tragedy, uh, Nefesh Mountain wrote a song entitled Tree of Life um, and, and put it out there. Uh, and so I have a, I think, a live version uh, of, their, uh, of their song that I wanted to share as well. Share with everybody tonight a song that Eric and I wrote the Sunday after the tragedy in Pittsburgh, a crime of hatred, a terrible anti-Semitic nightmare. And we woke up that next morning and as musicians, you know, we don't know what to do and I don't get it. I don't get why this is all happening and I don't know, but I knew that I wanted to do something. So Eric and I woke up and wrote a song. And so we wanted to sing this tonight. Um, it's an offering of love. It goes out to anyone who's ever been subjected to hate or any kind of a tragedy like this. And there's so much hate in this world. And um, the only way that we know how to do anything is to, is to try to put music out and to try to heal that with love and music. This song is called Tree of Life. And um, it is for all of us and for you. Oh, 
Sweet Spirit, hear my prayer. Help these words heal someone out there. I am but a voice, just a cry in the air. But I sing nonetheless through this pain we share. So if you don't know Nefesh Mountain um, or haven't heard them up to this point, uh, they are Jewish bluegrass. And uh, so this is something entirely different where the first one we had was all in Hebrew um, and this one all in English, uh, but certainly a, a Jewish response to something that happened to the Jewish community, um, but a song that uh, I think has... Um, is, is applicable not just in the Jewish world. Um, so interesting when we sort of ask ourselves what makes for Jewish music, right? And what makes for music that we might use in a, in a synagogue setting, in a prayer setting? Um, does it need any explicit Jewish content? Does it need some Hebrew? Probably not, but does it need textual references? I guess Tree of Life, right, is, is certainly there for those in the know. Um, but you could certainly see other groups and other people using this song, um, not necessarily knowing an Eitz Chaim or a Tree of Life. Um, any reflections on what makes Jewish music or what feels like might fit in, in a service or not? I think melodically, um, yeah. Zevi's piece was hard to feel like the congregation could actually learn. Mm -hmm. But this one is simple enough that I think that they could if right. somebody knew enough to be able to teach it, mm -hmm. which would not be me. <laughs> right. So it's, you know, it's interesting because a lot of Nefesh Mountain stuff, because it's bluegrass, is, you know, very complicated with guitar and banjo and fiddle and you know has this the the instrumentation is something that you know I certainly couldn't do and I think many people could not but a lot of their songs are actually doable if you simplify the the instrumentation piece uh and and the melody itself and the words are are easily accessible yeah. um so it's interesting that um you know, one of the things that defines them is this bluegrass music, but it's actually, they write some stuff that, that is uh, more accessible than that. Um, so one reason why I asked that is because 
there's a, a, the, the next song I want to introduce is actually, to my knowledge, not by a Jewish composer, but is done by a lot of Jewish musicians and in a lot of Jewish spaces. Um, and has sort of been taken on by the Jewish community, um, in part because uh, the name of the song is If Not Now, Tell Me When, which uh, harkens back to Hillel, right, and the Mishnah, um, who, you know, who famously said, you know, if not now, when? Im lo akshav ematai in the Hebrew. Um, but it's by someone named Carrie Newcomer, who to my knowledge is not Jewish. And, um, but the version that I have is by Dan Nichols in 18, who is a Jewish musician. And, um, and it's used in a lot of services. And the, the reason why I wanted to share it tonight, in, in addition to the fact that I like the song um, and that it sort of is, has this Jewish flavor to it, even though not, not being written by a Jewish person, um, is because uh, the students at Hebrew Union College, at my alma mater, uh, my rabbinic seminary, um, the the day of or the day after the um, the attack on October seventh, um, had a havdalah service, and one of them, who is actually a, a who grew up at Temple Shalom, uh, a first year cantorial student named Dana Peterson, shared. Um, shared this song as part of that Havdalah service and reflection on, on the attacks. So I don't have her version of it um, because they, that was just on Zoom and I don't know, it, it was probably recorded, but I don't have access to that. Um, so I, I'm bringing Dan Nichols version, but you know, interesting that it was used by a cantorial student for seminary students in Israel, in Jerusalem, uh, during a Havdalah service um, and spoke to them, even though it was not, um, composed by by a Jewish person and, and was probably not intended initially for use it for to be Jewish music let's put it that way if not now Tell me when, if not now, tell me when. We may never see this moment or place and time again. If not now, if not now, tell me when. I see sorrow and trouble in this land. I see sorrow and trouble in this land Although there will be struggles We'll make the change we can If not now, if not now Tell me when If not now Tell me when If not now If not now Tell me when see this moment we may never see this moment or place and time again if not now if not now tell me when we may never see the promised land we may never see the promised land and yet we'll make the journey We'll walk it hand in hand If not now, if not now Tell me when If not now Tell me when If not now Tell me when We may never see this moment or place in time again if not now if not now tell me when so we'll work until it's done every daughter every son every soul that ever longed for something better something brighter 
It will take a change of heart for this to mend. It will take a change of heart for this to mend. But miracles do happen, every shining now and then. If not now, if not now, tell me when. Try to sing it, it's not hard. If not now, tell me when. If not now, if not now, tell me when. We may never see this moment. We may never see this moment or place and time again if not now if not now tell me when but miracles do happen every shining now and then if not now if not now tell me when if not now if not now tell me So what do you think? A Jewish song? <laughs> Mom, why? Um, I think what you touched on earlier about the root of where that comes from, and at least for me, it touches, um, touches the Jewish core in me. Um, and I think the strength of it is it's broader than being, um, than having an appeal just to a Jewish audience. So it's universality is not something to shy away from, but um, can be taken on by our community and seen as something used in Jewish spaces and um, and we don't have to be threatened by the fact that it's also used in, in other spaces. But right. Rabbi, do, it, do you mean it to be used? Uh, I mean, it's okay, it's Jewish sounding to me, but do you mean it to be used in a, lit, a liturgical sense? There like are, in a... Yeah, there are definitely synagogues that do, that might do it like as a closing song. Um, you know, I, I mentioned that it was done as part of a reflective Havdalah service. Um, uh, you know, I, I know that synagogues do it like at a like a social justice Shabbat, right? That that might I, I don't know exactly where they might do it in the service, but but yeah, I mean, it, like in a liturgical setting. Well, I think that part of what makes it feel Jewish is it's a question. <laughs> yeah, and a question, but it's not in a minor key. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I we've, used, we've used all kinds of songs in liturgical settings. Um, you know, I mean, just look at all the things, all the tunes to which we sing Adon Olam. Um, you know, everything, Frosty the Snowman, you know, uh, Yankee Doodle. So, uh, so I, I, but I think what makes this song uh, Jewish, other than, or Jewish-ish, um, other than the question is that it's concerned with Tikkun Olam and justice and, um, it's aspirational in that way um, and implicitly offers some hope in terms of us being able to work together at some point, um, if not now, at some right. point. So. Right. And, it, you know, for not for being a not Jewish song, it certainly um, uses a lot of phrases that we're familiar with. Right. If not now, tell me when. Uh, it talks about the promised land. Right. Um, uh, and so it, it, sort of like with tree of life, right? That, you know, if you're not in the Jewish community, you, you might not associate that with, um, anything in particular, except a nice idea, but coming from a Jewish perspective, you know, the, having that, those phrases, um, bring the textual foundation with it, with them, um, even if it, it's not explicit in the song. Right, that we can have that phrase, the promised land, and know what what that it, at least in our brain refers to, and um, and point to all the other parts of our tradition that relate to it. What is the background of the people who wrote this? I mean, they intended this as a spiritual 
sort of yeah she's um you know like like she's a, a singer songwriter kind of folk musician um i don't know exactly what she meant when she wrote this song in particular um but you know she's in the you know americana setting um i guess we we could call her and um um you know she i i believe she's an activist of sorts as well so you know maybe there, there's something there that we're tapping into um you know i'm just looking very quickly at her bio um you know that says that you know, uh, she has um you know, appeared on on PBS's religious religion and ethics. She's been on Krista Tippett's On Being. So she's sort of, you know, in that spiritual, if not religious, realm. Um and, you know, has traveled to various places to assist with AIDS patients and um, you know, is involved in social change movements and that sort of thing. So um somebody who you know at least reading I, i've never met her but reading her bio sounds like kind of our people <laughs> even if she's not part of big mish um there's i think i'll choose one more uh peace song um which uh which comes from um, Kol Chai, which is a synagogue uh, community in New York. Uh, and this was in part written by uh, Yoel Sykes of Napa Tehillah, which is an, is, is an Israeli group. And, um, and we, we're certainly familiar with some of their melodies. And also by Renee Finkelstein, who's their uh, spiritual leader. Um, and so this one uh, is from Psalm 121, which we might know from Esa Enai, or from which we know Esa Enai, I should say. And uh, but the, this piece of Psalm 121 was translated into the feminine by Yoel Sykes, and intended, um, um, and I and I think also draws from the Hashki Benu prayer. Um, so. I think intended for a prayer either in that sort of Ose Shalom, Shalom Rav, Sing Shalom part of the service uh, in the Amidah or intended before the Amidah uh, as part of the Hashki Benu in the evening service. blessing of peace of embrace under the wings of quiet from now until forever
So a piece that was intended to be liturgy, right? And actually comes from the liturgy um, and entirely in Hebrew. Um, and staying with um, some stuff that is intended to be liturgy or or comes from it, um, I wanted to uh, go to Lechadodi and I have... Um, I think I'll just do one, we'll see where it goes, but uh, we'll do one Machadudi for now, uh, which comes from um, somebody who I didn't know of until somewhat recently, um, but I think is gaining a lot of traction, um, especially in the conservative movement, but I think elsewhere in the Jewish world, and that his name is um, Josh Warshawski. And and uh, he has a really lovely Machadudi that... Um, that I've heard used in a variety of places and um, and that I, I know speaks to a good number of people. So um, relatively new to me, uh, so I wanted to share that one as well. there um, because I think you get the gist of, of what that sounds like um, 
Interesting to note, I think I, I recognized Hava Morel, who's another Jewish musician. Maybe we'll get to one of her songs, uh, depending on our timing. Um, and she was sitting sort of uh, right to his right, I guess. Um, so. Um, um, Deborah Sachs Mintz was in there. Who also. Who else Deborah Sachs Mintz. Okay. Um, she's, uh, she's worked with Joey Weisenberg and those folks um yeah and has some uh records of her own out okay so yeah it's interesting that there's some collaboration and cross-pollination going on um so joey weisenberg um and i have a couple of, of pieces um from some other artists who he, um where you can see him in there um but uh, in part the Hadar ensemble, right? Um, from New York with the Hadar community and Beit Midrash. And um, so it seems that there's, um, I don't know what you would call it. If it's like, a, you know, they workshop together or they're, they're just support one another, or that, you know, that there's this sort of center of um, some new Jewish music going on. Um, in yeah, New York. Philly's, Philly's hot. Yes, Philly and New York and, um, so interesting that, that that's kind of going on and that uh, there's a lot of people coming together um, and sort of in the same circles. Um, so it's interesting to see, um, even though they might be in the same circles, you know, what are some similarities or differences in their music? Um, so uh, one of those people who are sort of in that circle um is Batya Levine um and so I wanted to share a piece from from her um and uh a, a Jewish musician but nothing I would say explicitly Jewish in this song um but comes out of that and you'll see Joe Joey Weisenberg is in this video um as well as Ali Halpert, who's another Jewish musician. Um, and and um, I have a whole list of, of people who are there as well. But um, Yosef Goldman is, is another one um, who's actually local uh, to us. Um, so I, I like I like seeing the people coming together and doing stuff together. And um, um, I think we're, we're better for that. Uh, So here is Batya Levine, who I believe comes out of that Hadar ensemble. We yeah, that's rise, humbly hearted rise, won't be divided rise. Spirit to guide us rise in hope in prayer we find ourselves here in a hope in prayer we're right here in a hope in prayer we find ourselves
So that was Batia Levine. Um, and a number of, of people um, th that I mentioned, I, I recognized in the video and a few others. Um, um, yeah, one uh, of them is uh, Yosef Goldman, um, yeah. the guy in the blue shirt and the big scarf. Um, he's actually like in Gaithersburg, I thought. He's yeah. in a congregation, I yeah. I believe it's Gaithersburg. Him and, and his wife, Annie Lewis, are mm -hmm. co-rabbis at that at their synagogue is it i'm trying to remember what it is uh, rabbi if i can make an observation this is just my personal thing but right. that that <laughs> sounds more christian than jewish to me because so many contemporary christian songs have to do with rise and risen oh, and, okay you know um and they repeat that again and again and it sounds really like some of the christian modern christian american i should say american christian you know um uh, contemporary songs. Hmm. Interesting. I, I have. I guess I don't know enough of them to to comment on that. But it's interesting that like, right? Obviously, rising is is <laughs> for Jesus, you know for Christians a, a an important concept. But you know, does that mean that like in Jewish music we should shy away from that term, right? Rising or rise or risen? Um, like, is that just too hot a, a button to push? Um, because it being in the American and you know majority Christian context, or at least plur plurality Christian context. Um, yeah, I wonder if there are other concepts or phrases or words that feel like even if they are, you know, it, coupled with Hebrew or um, done by, you know, very Jewish people in Jewish settings, like are there words or phrases that we might feel like, make something feel not jewish or christian hmm. like would the word savior right, right do the same thing no right to me, it felt like it had gospel roots in the music but having said that it was also really easy to relate to it felt um very much like music from the folk era um which it's a strong chord for me and the idea of rising to me keyed into never again um so i could see that used liturgically without a problem and for me the issue of rising is the idea of you know finding that that's hidden and then finding those sparks and bringing them out and rising them. Um, so I, I see it as a very Jewish kind of term. It's tapping into Kabbalah and, and finding the shards and uh, yes. tikkun olam. Yeah, you just take take things like Savior and use them in Hebrew and then nobody knows. Right, right. <laughs> but, you know, for a song that was entirely in English then, right? right. Like, <laughs> can something feel Jewish and still use those words? <laughs> Uh -huh. the, I, and I love what I like about it is, I mean, the harmonies were were beautiful, um, but it's enough in a it's kind of a chant like way that it it really could be. I, I mean, the whole album, uh, Caro, from which is this is taken, is done with the intent of people singing together because that's part of the whole Hadar Rising Song Institute is to get people to sing together. And I, I can see with very little effort, you know, turning that into something really cool for um for our congregation so. right and you know you could definitely see it used in like a, a tikkun olam social justice setting right like a a rally or a vigil or something a protest um you, you know that jews are are there for um sort of like how olam chesed yibane has kind of become the social justice um anthem for a lot of causes um right right rabbi menachem creditor uh written a number of years ago, um, you know, that's used. I, I remember watching video of some of my colleagues get arrested uh, in the Capitol building um, and and singing that. Um, I don't even remember what the cause was, you know, whether it was against gun violence or if it was for dreamers or, you know, that th there are these things that are sort of, you can plug in and get people singing together with justice in mind. And and also, you know, their Judaism guiding their justice work. Um, and 
sort of the interplay between the music and, and the action. Um, so I could see this one definitely in, in that setting as well. Or even strangely enough, at the end of Naila. Huh. Yeah. I don't think it's for our show after Naila, but in somebody's show after Naila. <laughs> well, it, when, when I was um, at Temple High in Phoenix, when it was my first posting out of rabbinical school, um, we would end Naila with essentially a dance party. Like we'd have the band playing really upbeat music and people would start you know, doing the horror because the way of saying like, we made it, right? We're, we're done with that heaviness of the day and let's rejoice. That's great. Um, so, so yeah, you could definitely see something along those lines too with Re Rise. Um, so let's stay in the same community um, at least and go to Rena Branson, who I believe we saw in the circle there um, singing, but this is a song um, specifically by her um called i will carry you and it um it references isaiah 46 4 um the hebrew is va'ad seva ani when you turn gray i'll still carry you i'll be patient with you i will bear you um so here is rena branson um, again from that ensemble
So going back and forth, right? Hebrew and English. Um, and relatively simple, right? Um, not a lot of English to learn, definitely not a lot of Hebrew to learn. Somewhat simple melody. Um, of course, they made more complicated and beautiful by harmony. Um, but it felt doable, right? Something that you could sing along to, as, as we saw with We Rise as well. Um, I'm going to go to Alana Arian, who I think I, I highlighted in the last one, um, but this is a different piece by her. Um, she's uh, teaches in the Cantorial School at Hebrew College in in, uh, in New York, uh, so she's definitely situated in the Reform movement um, and um, sort of one of the the main musical people who um, I'd say is making a splash in, in the reform world, at least, and I think elsewhere. Um, and so this is her Ken Yehi Ratzon, uh, which is lovely. We'll open it from five. be safe, may I be free, may I find space, space to just be, can you hear that song, can you hear that song, may I find Someone who has been good to us, a teacher, a friend, someone who brings a smile when we think of them. We open up our hearts and we offer them this blessing. May you be safe. May you be. Can you hear that song? May you find your way back home. Can you hear that song? Can you hear that song? May you find your way back home. We call to mind someone who is difficult to us. Some who is a challenge someone who we don't understand we open up our hearts and we try to offer them this blessing may you be safe we provide 
all the good that we can do together. We open up our hearts and we offer ourselves this blessing. May we be a saint. Can you hear that song? Can you hear that song? May we find our way back home. Can you hear that song? Can you hear that song? May we find our way back home. Can you hear that song? Can you hear that song? Can you hear that song? May we find our way back home. Uh, so that was Alana Arian um, riffing off of um, the priestly blessing from the book of Numbers. Um, and Alex, I don't know if you're there, if you wanted to share what, what you uh, Yeah, so this is loving kindness meditation, um, but you actually end with yourself, I think, um, where you, um, so you think of someone you love and you say, you know, may you be happy, may you be free, may you be at peace and something else. There's a four part thing. And then you extend it to someone you care, you know, that you care about, but not necessarily love then to the, someone you don't like then to the world. So yeah, it's, um, it's a common, it's a lovely mashup. Yeah. Yeah. And I think at the beginning it said, you know, this was inspired by loving kindness meditation and oh, I missed the book that. number and beer cup Kohani. Okay. So, yeah. So, no, no, no. So I thank you for highlighting that for us. Um, I want to share one more. Um, this is one by Josh Nelson. Um, I've done a number of, of his melodies at Beit Mish. Um, his uh, Hava Nashira, I've started the service with uh, before. Uh, Hava, Hava Nashira, Shir Hallelujah. Um, and I've also done his uh, Yihiu Laratzon quite a bit. Uh, Yihiu Laratzon, Imre Fi, Imre Fi. So he's um, he's out there and he's he's been there for a while. Um, this this is one that I didn't know really until I guess this year or the or the last year um, called One and Only, which I know for a fact they use at Temple Shalom uh, at certain parts of the service. Um, uh, you know, One and Only you can tell probably um, talks a little bit about the themes of the Shema um, and other parts of the service, but. Uh, it's very upbeat and it has a number of Jewish musicians who you might recognize uh, in this version, uh, including Michelle Citrin, who we looked at last time we uh, we had this kind of uh, gathering. And I I, think if I I need to remember if Alana Arian is there too. If someone else is there, but we'll see if it <laughs> if it's her or if it's Koffer Morel or someone else. I think it's Alana Arian. I've just watched a lot of these videos and I forget which who's in which one. Lonnie. So open up your heart to all the lost and lonely. Let no
said, if your God is my God and my God is everything, aren't we all, aren't we all part of one God? So let your God be my God and our God be everything. Oh, we're all, no, we're all part of one God. So their hands just like this come on people out there on the interwebs there's probably like a four or five second delay but don't worry because we can't hear you so just clap your hands come on if your love come on sit if your love is my love and my love is everything are we all are we all part of one love then let your love be my love and our love be everything oh well This moment. This is the moment of lift. This is the moment of arrival. Just come with us right now. Come on. If your heart, sing it out. If your heart is my heart and my heart is everything, aren't we all, aren't we all part of one heart? family came in for that one <laughs> <laughs> there's some dancing going on in the background i'm not going to say back here. um but uh interesting i i also noticed um in that video um cantor josh breitzer who's the cantor at uh, beth elohim in brooklyn um where my uh, one of my colleagues and, and classmates uh, rachel timoner is who i quoted in my uh in my um Colney Dre Sermon, um, who's an amazing rabbi. Um, so he's there with her. And then also, I think I saw the back of the head of Cantor Ellen Dreskin, who is out there in the Jewish music world as well, and who 
um, when there was a uh, cantor Rosalie Boxed, um, who's local, yeah. put Rosalie Will, excuse me, thank you, um, uh, put together a, a musical gathering uh, in response to the attacks on October 7th. Um, one of the people who did something was Ellen Dreskin and Mal Avi was watching it. She says, it's Sapta, because she has long kind of gray or, or white curly hair um, and was kind of small on, on the box. So <laughs> looked familiar enough. Um, so I think I saw her head bobbing um, in there too. So again, I, I like to see all of these Jewish musicians coming together and sharing ideas and singing together and um you know, I think drawing from various traditions and various artists and it is a wonderful thing. Um, and I, of course, love Debbie Friedman and she was a teacher of mine, um, but there's a lot else that's out there um, that's exciting and um, that maybe we might want to use at Beit Mish or just listen to and find inspiration in. Um, so I hope that some of this was inspiring or at least entertaining and enjoyable. And uh, maybe even healing as music can be um, in difficult times. And uh, there are, of course, a lot that I didn't get to, but I will share, um, I'll share my playlist on YouTube with you all, and you can sort of enjoy them at your leisure. Could you also provide text? Because yeah, sometimes it's hard to understand the words. Um, I can go through and see um, which ones are text-based and um, sometimes on the description on YouTube, they might have the text um, down there below, uh, but I'll see what what's doable and um, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Uh, any final reactions or reflections to any of that? I loved it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Yes, thank you for a, a wonderful class, and thank you, all of us, for joining us. We have another class coming up in a couple weeks. Yes, we do. Yeah. Superstitions in the Jew Jewish tradition from around our Jewish world. Thank you, Rabbi. I'm going to try to find some of those recordings. They were really good. Cool, and I'll I'll share them too. So if you, uh, yeah, I'll try to get that out pretty soon. Then you'll have that would be great. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Good night, everybody. All right. Night, Davi. Want to say good night to Safta? Love you. <laughs>